YouTube family. Hey, good morning uh, to you or good evening, wherever this might find you. T to me, it's a good morning. It's a beautiful morning here in uh, the northwest corner of Montana in our little corner of the world. And you can see the mountains. The sun is just starting to come up this morning. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. And I wanted to take a few min minutes and just show you a uh, geyser garden. Um, this is something that we haven't done a lot. We have been busy this summer. You guys saw our vacations and uh, a canoe trip and Priscilla uh, did some uh, cooking videos and now I wanted to show you guys our garden and the reason I'm showing this to you well uh, different reasons but one reason is we're just getting ready to harvest our garlic and so there's this balance between uh, this is about as full as our garden is going to look right now because we're going to harvest our garlic so that's going to make it look empty although things like our watermelon and uh, our cantaloupe and those things are just starting to really uh, take off. So it's not as big as as it's going to be later, and we'll do more of it later. But I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of what a garden looks like. So I'm standing here in front of uh, my garden gate, and this garden is nothing like really. Uh, it, there's so many things we can improve on. I always say gardening is like a great experiment. You try things, and then you improve on them the next year or later. Um, but on our garden, we have what we call a no-till method. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and probably even more in depth later. But I'll give you a general overview of how we do our no-till gardening. And for us, it has worked out very well. It has its challenges in the beginning as the soil. Um, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. But for right now, I just want to show you this is the gate when we're walking from the house. This is the gate that we walk into. And our garden is not, it, not everything's perfect. Like, in other words, the rows aren't all perfect and each thing has its own spot. We kind of have a garden where, where we enjoy growing a lot of things in a lot of spaces. So there's sunflowers mixed in with the garlic. There's all these things kind of grown together. It just makes this green jungle. So here we go, let's get started. So we're coming up uh, to the garden and on each side of the garden, we have uh, large uh, lilac bushes that are just beautiful. This year they were, uh, they were wonderful. And there's Rosie, she's uh, out here checking out the cats or something or checking out to see if she can hunt some something. And then uh, coming in here, this is of course uh, looking west uh, towards the Cabinet Mountain Wilderness. This is some of my, my favorite view right here. That's snow that's on those mountains all year round. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mountains. So I have everything set up on a drip irrigation system and I have three zones. I have zone one, zone two, and zone three. and and this zone waters the entire perimeter of my garden and the orchard. This zone waters the upper half of my garden and this low, uh, zone uh, waters the lower portion of my garden. Now I really, these are my favorite water timers. So I would recommend that. Matter of fact, I'll put a link in the description box below if you guys want these waters. You can get a lot of different ones, but I've tried other ones and I get so frustrated because they're so hard to figure out. These are so simple. Just very, very simple. They're easy to to uh, uh, to adjust. And uh, right now, my garden is watering. I water, depending on um, in the spring, I might water 15 minutes. Right now, I'm up to one hour uh, per zone. So I'm water. That's twice a day. So I'm literally watering six hours a day each zone right now because we've been having temperatures over 100 degrees steadily. And now it's cooled down a bit. We're in the 90s now. Uh, but I can tell my garden has suffered, been suffering a little bit, so I keep turning it up, keep turning the, the, the time up, and I'm at an hour per zone uh, here. And that just seems, I just noticed now, everything seems to be doing a lot better since I turned it up. I was at about 40 minutes. I turned it up to 60 minutes. So uh, I might have to, I might back it down just a little bit, but it definitely seems to have made a big difference just in the couple days that I've been doing that. And then as it starts cooling off, I will... Uh, I'll turn that down a little bit as, as we don't need it. And I really like this drip irrigation system. It has really, really worked well for us. I, we never have to come out and sprinkle our garden. Um, I really have a sprinkler going on in my drive right now just to cut down the dust a little bit, uh, wet the gravel a bit. That's what you hear if you might hear it in the background. But these are basically uh, onions that Priscilla planted. I think these are like a, a yellow onion. And 
we just kind of have things growing around. Like, so here we have some kiwi. We've never gotten kiwi, actually. Um, we planted a male and female plant, but I think the female or one of them died. So it's just that thing. Uh, and you can see the outside is kind of encroaching on the inside. One thing I got to say, though, my fence, you can see it's leaning. <laughs> and I, I'm going to have to replace it probably this fall. Unfortunately, these posts right here were called ground contact treated posts, but I'm not going to use those again. Those actually rotted off. I should have used the green treated ones. So that's a lesson learned there. So here's the rhubarb. Um, and then we have carrots here. And these are uh, growing quite well. Let's just pull one out for grins. Let's see. This looks like a pretty good sized plant right here. And these, uh, they're not, not going to be really big. Wyatt pulled out a pretty good couple good ones the other day. Well, without a... There we go. So there's a, a carrot. That's about how big they are. And we're in the beginning of July here, about the beginning of the second week of July. And then we have uh, irises growing along here. We have all these daylilies that are going to be blooming uh, later today. All those will open up. You can see just some random sunflowers. Here Priscilla has uh, a little bit of dill growing. And, oh, I am not sure. I forget what. I guess that's just cabbage. Yeah, I believe it's just cabbage. It is. Uh, we had a real aphid problem last year, but this year we have not had. So we're uh, really happy about that. More peppers and some walla walla onions up there. Uh, lettuce. We've already harvested some things that here that she replanted. Um, I think it was like uh, some more lettuce maybe and, and radishes. That's the last of the radishes. Here we have uh, our uh, different varieties of tomatoes growing. And then coming over here, and this is something that we have uh, really uh, liked. We've always put down plastic here just because it makes extra heat uh, for like the cucumbers and the melons and those things to grow. But we decided to go with ground cover because we don't have to uh, pull that up each year. With the plastic, each year you have to pull the, the ground cover up and uh, the plastic up each year because it, it just disintegrates. It's basically one year. Sometimes you can get two years out of it, but this supposedly will last five to 10 years. We'll see, it's, it's obviously a little bit more expensive, but it works really well. What I like about this is the, if it rains, the water can soak right down into the ground and you're not, uh, like plastic, it just runs off. So I feel like the ground, it's not as healthy for the ground. So I really like this, this idea of the ground cover. And obviously no weeds grow in it. All we did is we, there's two ways you could do this. I'm in four foot wide rolls, and these are the where the seams meet. We didn't quite overlap them far enough. They stretched a little bit. Um, and so that's where we planted our things. Now here, uh, like we planted all our cucumbers and, and such right on where the, the seams are. But uh, right over here where the tomatoes are, we actually took a, a little weed burning torch and we just simply cut a little, melt a little hole. It's really simple. Uh, my uh, sister-in-law uh, and cousin, what they do is they actually plant the corn in this stuff, and they'll go and and melt little holes, you know, like in, like two inches apart, three inches apart, and that's just where they'll plant their corn. And actually, it works pretty good. So, anyways, different varieties of peppers, um, zucchinis, and we have uh, cucumbers growing along there, pole beans along here, and this is really cool because in the a little bit later in about another month this thing will be completely covered it's like a green jungle and you can walk underneath here and pick your cucumbers and beans so we'll just plant some flowers here for pretty and then these uh watermelons are literally just starting to take off um they look pretty tiny but in the next month they're going to be huge this whole place is going to be completely green and it's so fun to walk out here and see your cantaloupe like their cantaloupe and and a watermelon growing down here now let's jump down here. Here's just a random sunflower that started growing. Um, here we have a jungle. These are just, uh, all these are volunteer sunflowers that just came up. We, we pulled a lot of them out, and so we just decided to leave some. And these are my grapes. I got a couple varieties of grapes in here. And I don't want to make this video too long because I could talk for hours on my garden. I really love this garden. There's so much I could talk about it. But um, we did have a late, uh, a late, uh, hard cold snap it was like up to 50 degrees and i feel like the sap was already starting to run in a lot of my raspberries and grapes and what happened is the 
it got below zero and I think uh, it killed. And I've noticed other people I've asked as well and it's same thing has happened to them where it killed some of our raspberries and blackberries and grape vines uh, simply because I think the sap was running up and it got like 15 below zero and I think it killed them. Uh, but there, some of them are starting to come up by the roots now, which is which is nice. But we won't get as many grapes this year, obviously, because of that reason. You can see right there uh, is kind of starting to grow a little bit here. It's starting to come back, but this all this vine is basically dead here, just starting to grow up from the bottom, which is kind of sad. And our favorite grape over here, it just makes such delicious grapes, valiant and reliant. Uh, this one ended up dying, but again, it's coming up from the roots. It's It's right down there. So we'll get some, but not until next year, I guess. Okay, here's Priscilla's uh, peas, and we, our fence didn't come quite down far enough. So now you can see if you don't have a fence, they all lay in a jumble like this, and they're hard to pick. But when they're on a fence, look at the difference here. That's coming down the fence right there, and boom, they just disappear, and they're all on the ground right there. So it's really nice to have a fence. This fence is about three foot tall, and it's just a little wire fence. I pounded um, some uh, posts in, and these peas are almost ready to pick in about, let's see if I can find a really fat one here. They're nice and juicy. Um, they're not quite ready yet, but in probably in a couple, uh, days, they'll be, they'll be good to go. And our children just love to come out here and just eat these, um, eat these, uh, peas. So it's, it's wonderful. We, we love to have the garden uh, where we had the peas. I got to show you this. So I'm jumping around, but this is our little garden pavilion. Okay, that rooster's loud. Uh, this is a garden pavilion that I built for Priscilla. And I want to show you these evening primroses. These are so beautiful. These come out uh, only, these flowers last one day. And you can see this flower right here. That was last uh, yesterday's flower. And these evening primroses will come out and you can literally see them. They'll go like, shh about that fast and just expand. And it's, it's so cool to watch. We'll bring the kids out here just to watch them open up in the evenings, just before dark. And just a bunch of flowers. These, all these flowers get pink and purple certain times of the year. Here's some of um, Priscilla's flowers. And we have our chickens up there. And the reason we do is so the, as they uh, make compost, we haul it, we throw it uh, then downhill, we bring it downhill to the garden and also all the good nutrients leach down into the garden. So uh, from just from natural, the flow of the land. So that's why we have the chickens above our garden. So this is corn and uh, some of the corn's doing really well. Some of them is not doing quite as well. Uh, more beans, some of our beans didn't come up so Priscilla replanted. And now you can see some are taller than others here. Our greenhouse, actually here's a bunch of tea, different varieties of tea that we grow. Um, kind of a messy greenhouse, it's not that great, but it kind of works. Uh, more to, uh, tomatoes here, come up through the greenhouse. We have uh, this going and starting into our orchard here and a couple of our trees aren't doing as well. Cherry trees have never done well for some reason. And these are our uh, strawberries. We did not get as many strawberries as we did other years. I'm not sure why, but uh, anyways. Okay, rooster. And this I did, I kind of did a different uh, plan with this. I actually put a post here and a post up on the other end and I ran wire across and now all our apple trees uh, are growing like in a lateral line right along here. And it's like a wall and all I have to do is come along here. I tied the branches going this direction and going that direction, left to right. So all now I have to do is I have to just come in here and just pick off my apples. And it's not like a round bush tree, it's just a, a straight wall of trees. And let's keep coming across here. We randomly planted some more potatoes along here. And this is a cherry tree that doesn't have hardly any cherries on it, unfortunately. Uh, some of our apple trees are doing really well. Here's a peach tree that I've probably picked over 100 peaches off already, just so the ones that are on here aren't too heavy for the tree. And this one's got a lot of apples. 
This one has got a lot of apples on it. And then we have some, uh, these are pears and we have quite a few pears here. So now we're on the upper end of our garden looking down. Uh, we have some more corn here. We have potatoes and our raspberries are over along this fence right here. So there you can see more corn. And the challenge with chip uh, wood chips is it changes like the pH of the soil and different text, different things of the soil. So what I've, what we found is if we do it again, we'd use the most compost, the chips that we could find. We had a beautiful garden. It took a couple of years, a number of years for it to kind of bounce back. It really changed the, the effects of the soil. That being said, I would still do it. Um, but you can see like this corn, the corn on that end is really tall, nice and green. It comes up here and it just slopes off into nothing. Um, and we did put some more manure on top last year, last fall. And I think that definitely helped, but not everything is, it's not perfect still. So we're still working on getting the garden uh, the way we'd like it. So up here we have yellow raspberries and some of the tips uh, of the old ones died last year. So I'm not sure how many we'll get. These all were ones that are supposed to bear this year and this is all new growth. So we're gonna get a few of these, but not too many. Here I have windows stacked outside here that I'm hoping to make a greenhouse with at some point. And you can see my drip uh, irrigation going on. So it's spraying right now and it's spraying over the raspberries. And that's just a couple things I have along the fence kind of wet that side of the raspberries a lot. And our raspberries are going to be doing pretty well. Look at all of them in there. They're just hanging heavy. It's gonna be probably about a week or so and they're gonna be really starting to get ready. So we'll come down here and I'll show you our garlic and then it's kind of the bulk of it here. So this year we only planted about uh, 1,000 plants of garlic. That's a lot less than we've done in the past. Um, but we're gonna get started on harvesting this. Matter of fact, let's pull a couple bulbs and we just have a bunch of varieties here. And we sell all this garlic at our local uh, Amish farm to market store here in Libby, Montana. So I'm not sure how well these garlics are doing, but let's just randomly pull one. Here's one, we're just gonna grab this thing and pull up the bulb. Okay, here we go, bud. Come on out of there. So he's pretty wet. So there's, there's the bulb. I would say that's a large size bulb. That's probably, uh, what is that? Two and a half inches across, something like that. So we have to, I'm gonna turn the water off today on these so they can start drying up. And basically what I do is I'll go up here and I will um, pull off, that's a header line right there. And I'll simply pull this line off of here and put a plug in it just like I have there. And that way it keeps the water from coming through. And over here we have um, blackberries. And like I said, those didn't do so well. I think probably because of the um, the late uh, freezing we had. And here I have <laughs> some water spraying in the air simply because I had a one of my little dripper things broke off. And so it now it's spraying up in the air. I'm going to have to fix that. We have some black raspberries down there. And uh, um, further down we have... Um, an herb patch where we have like um, lovage and there's some comfort back there, more grapes growing back there and oregano, some chives, different things. And we have some, uh, there you can see my fence is falling apart. Uh, this is pretty much a weed patch. We have to deal with that, probably just cover it with chips and there's some asparagus there. Some roses down here but yeah just there you have it just a general you planted some potatoes there uh, that's where our garden looks it's it's we love it out here we love to come out in the evening actually we'll come out probably later this evening i'll finish this little video and um we'll see how we'll show you how it looks in the evening uh tonight so i hope you enjoyed this and again i think i'll go a little bit more in depth later um, i'll just tell you real quick about the chips what we do basically is we uh, we put, um, you can use, uh, so you want to use cardboard. That's what you put on top of the soil and you can use like banana boxes or you can use what we found that works really well. It's easy to, to use is just a roll of, of uh, painter's paper. It's the brown paper. And we just simply roll that out 
and then we'll uh, put about uh, three to four inches of chips, wood chips on top of that. And that it does two things. The paper actually will disintegrate uh, underneath because as it, as it rots and the worms can go right up through that paper. And, uh, and then the wood chips are there to keep the weeds from growing. And it also keeps the moisture in. So it works really, really well. We learned, we actually went and visited his farm, um, Paul from Back to Eden Gardening in Washington. And it's a really cool, uh, it, it was wonderful to be there and experience it. And he showed us around his farm and maybe check it out online. I don't know if I can find a link. If I do, I'll, I can see if I can post it in the link description box below. Uh, but yeah, it's called Back to Eden Gardening. Uh, Paul Gauchi, I think is his name. And uh, really, really neat fellow. Um, so anyways, I hope uh, uh, you have a wonderful day and I'll see you just in a couple minutes. But for me, it's going to be about uh, 12 hours or more later this evening. Okay, I just came out here in the garden to do a little bit of watering for my flowers. And can you see that? That's such a bummer. It's just a whole bunch of smoke coming over the mountains, hiding the mountains. It must be coming from the other side of the mountain somewhere. I'm not sure where the smoke is coming from or what kind of fire it is, but there's definitely a lot of smoke. That's a bummer. But anyways, just wanted to show you that. Almost every summer we deal with some fires around here. Usually they're not too terrible close though, which is great. So this is late afternoon and we're heading to uh, his parents' place because um, his sister Lori and her family is here from Redding, California. So we're gonna get together and just have a, some dinner together and just hang out and talk. So we'll get a little, we'll get a little bit of footage of that. I suppose. <laughs> Okay, Chloe, what are you going to play? Um, Croquet? Yep, there's some dad has some pigs back there that he's fattening up to butcher. That's why it. Oh, let Bachi have it for a minute. She'll get tired of it and lay it down. That's my niece right there. These are my nieces and nephews. It's a pleasant evening to be sitting here chatting they're playing a game over here let's go see what they've got going on we're down here at my parents place they're playing a game called coob That's my mom, my sister, and Priscilla, my sister-in-law, and my nephew's wife, there's my niece, my nephew, my dad, four nieces, that's Judith, and Grace, and Ethana, and Abigail, and Delilah.
We're now out in the garden. It's evening and we had a good time with family and the sun is just kind of getting ready to set there. It's still pretty smoky out. Not quite as bad as it was earlier today, but it's still pretty bad. But we're watering a few of the plants. Priscilla is watering a couple things that don't have drip irrigation to them. Yeah, we gotta keep them watered in this hot weather. It was like in the mid 90s today. Yep. I always pick off the dead le the the dead flowers. To mom. Oh, Avalon, what have you got? Um, some raspberries. Oh, we found a couple of red raspberries. What do you have, Chloe? There. What do you want to say? Decent so good. What does that mean? These are so good. Yep. These raspberries, they're just loaded heavy. But they're not quite ready yet, mostly. Oh, I see a red one in there. There's a red one. Totally bright red in there. Can we? Oh, Dad! Yep, Chloe's got it. Oh. In the mouth. Any more in there? I don't know. What are you picking, Wyatt? Black raspberries. I think you scarfed all the ones that are ready. There's a couple more that are ready. Almost ready. There's one. And a pinky. These, most of these aren't quite ready yet either. Well, it's so pleasant to be out in the garden uh, towards evening when it uh, mm -hmm. when it cools off some and just nibble on the stuff that gets ready like right now I'm eating some some peas <laughs> and we've got raspberries and things to munch on and yeah it's just pleasant coming out here the bees are busy on these sunflowers yeah but anyways thanks for watching this episode of Montana Haven and mm -hmm. we hope you enjoyed it and we will see you on the next video God bless yes <laughs> Thy way, O glory, thy way. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, help thy way. When the shadows of the night have flown, help thy way. Like a bird from prison bars has flown.